Sup y'all, it's me, it's your boy Asmongold, and today I want to talk to you guys about some of the new information that's come out regarding patch 7.2, Tomb of Sargeras. Now, before I get into any of this, I do want to say that this is on a PTR, which means that if you see something in this video that gets you so fucking mad that you've got to leave a comment in all caps lock, well, you're going to do that anyway. But after you do that, go ahead and lay down, calm down, get back up, and give Blizzard some form of constructive criticism of why you don't like the thing. Because the earlier in the development cycle that they get that feedback, the more likely it is for them to change things based on that feedback if they want to. That being said, a lot of new information came out today, especially in terms of like quantitative stuff. So what are going to be the artifact knowledge percentage increases modifiers uh, from AK uh, 26 all the way up to 40? So they actually released those as well as a couple of other things, um, you know, and also the way that AP is going to be working in patch 7.2. And that's one of the big things that I want to talk about because I just did a video on that and they followed up a lot of people's concerns with AP and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Also, they're adding, uh, for D3 players, they're adding Kadala into WoW. For people who don't know what that is, they're adding a vendor that you can buy items from, that you can identify, and it can potentially be legendaries into WoW. Now, also, they're adding mounts into the emissary caches, which is cool, and a number of other things like loading screens for the winter uh, all track, uh, or sorry, not all track, all track, all track is always winter, um, the uh, Arathi Basin thing, and a couple of other like little minor things that I want to go through with you guys. But the first thing I want to talk about about is obviously the AP stuff and the AK stuff because that was what I just talked about in my last video and I want to kind of get that out of the way and just completely deal with that. So uh, in patch 7.2 Obviously, they're going to be getting rid of the Paragon trait that we have right now that increases your damage, right? And so people thought, okay, so they're getting rid of that trait, and now all you have to do is level up your weapon, and it's going to take a long time. It's kind of gated by artifact knowledge, and after you're done, you're done, right? Your weapon's done. So, so they got rid of they got rid of the uh, 20 trait Paragon thing, and they added they added a 50 trait Paragon uh, trait. Okay. 50, 50 rank, 50 rank Paragon trait. It's called con uh, Concordance of the Legion Fall. Your abilities have a chance to trigger Concordance of the Legion Fall, increasing your primary stat for 11,800 for 10 seconds. So obviously... And the way that this works, the way that the scaling works, is that you're never going to get 50 ranks of this, okay? If I understand it correctly, you're never going to get 50 ranks for this. My understanding is that you need about 4 billion artifact power in order to fully level up your weapon outside of the concordance traits, and then you need something like 134 or 100 and... 78, I believe, billion artifact power in order to fully level up the concordance traits. And um, in order to get the 4 billion artifact power, you need, I think, 346 Moab Souls runs on um, Mythic Plus level 7 to 9. So it's like you're going to get 178 mil billion. That's just not going to, it's not going to happen. So this is, for all intents and purposes, an infinitely scaling trait. And I, I don't like it. I, I don't like infinitely scaling things. I, I, I like to be able to finish things, okay? I, I just like to be able to finish things. So you guys know that about me, so I don't want to beat a dead horse. But what I do want to do is I do want to show you guys and talk to you guys about some of the uh, blue posts that have been made in response to people's concerns about this trait and about the way that artifact knowledge and artifact power is going to be working in the infinite, I, I guess, like, uh, infinite way and before I do that I just want to give you guys an idea on what artifact knowledge is going to scale to okay so artifact knowledge 26 is going to be 50,000 artifact knowledge 30 is going to be 125,000 artifact knowledge 35 is going to be 380,000 artifact knowledge 38 is going to be 740 45,000 and artifact knowledge 40 which is the max level is going to be 1,165,000 percent increase in artifact power gains that's a big number. And you're going to think like a million, all, all a billion is easy. Like, like guys, a, a billion is a thousand millions. Okay, just think about that. Even with 40 AK, this is going to take forever. All right, just, just so you understand. Now, all that being said, let's go ahead and look at what people's uh, concerns are with the uh, with the artifact power and artifact knowledge here, okay? And if I got those numbers wrong, please go ahead and let me know. I don't think that I did, though. I did a little bit of research on this. So anyway, um, this is in response to people's concerns, okay? Uh, the individual ranks are less impactful. This is honestly... Uh, 
uh, honestly one of our biggest issues with the 7.0 design grinding out a couple million artifact powers for 0.5% raw damage increase was just too lucrative compared to other methods of in-game progression even eclipsing some gear for players uh, the goal for 7.2 design is to uh, visit the next rank is still an increase you won't turn it down but it's not your primary focus so it's to pretty much make artifact power this overarching always useful reward so you never really want to vendor artifact power and um you know, I, I don't really, as I said, I feel like there should have, there should be an end in, in sight, but this is obviously uh, not what they're trying to do. Uh, they're trying to actually have the opposite. And uh, number two, the rate at which the cost for the next increases, uh, rate uh, at which the cost for the next rank increases is higher uh, in patch 7.0 design. Uh, someone who farmed twice as much AP as you had roughly twice as many ranks as you. While rewarding the extra effort isn't a bad thing, it doesn't need to be nearly that rewarding. By making each rank's cost exponentially more, uh, we can help ensure that you're never too far behind, even if you aren't spending as much time farming AP. It also means that as artifact knowledge increases, it will be easier for alts or new players to catch up. As a quick aside, put some extra um, context on the... Uh, okay, this is... Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, change number three, the new trait gives a primary stat bonus instead of a percentage-based increase. I thought the percentage-based increase was a bad idea, too. I feel like this is a better idea. Um, it, I, maybe it might be a better idea. I also like having a flat uh, damage increase. I think they both have advantages, but uh, basically the percentage increase allowed people to scale even farther past what they kind of wanted them to. So if you're doing 100,000 DPS and you have a 20% increase, you're doing 120,000 DPS. If you're doing 200,000 DPS and you have a 20% increase, you're doing 240 uh, 240,000 DPS. So the bigger your original number is, obviously the more the, the percentage is going to increase it by so it kind of created a, an even bigger power gap uh, that I, I can see why they'd want to get rid of okay um, basically, and this is what they said, again, the goal here is to reduce the overall power gap. And finally, number four, it's a proc. And I know anything that involves RNG is quite contra often controversial, but this is, in my opinion, a great example of when it, for it's extremely useful. And this is for two reasons. First, it muddies the waters a bit, because the main thing that you want to do whenever you're uh, doing any sort of progression raid that's based on numerical difficulty is not be able to understand where things are going wrong. Uh, whenever you wipe on a boss at 1% or barely miss a kill window, it can be easy to say, if Todd was doing 2% more damage, we'd have won. But whenever it's a proc, you can't actually be that sure. That's because you can't proc, you can't factor procs into your damage, of course. It's, well, how does SimCraft even work? Um, you can't actually be sure. Uh, maybe Todd needs more AP, or maybe he just got unlucky with his procs. So this is great. Uh, now you're going to wipe because of procs. Um, maybe the wipe wasn't Todd's fault at all. Maybe you should be a little bit nicer to Todd. Maybe you shouldn't design the game around Todd. Um, second, more importantly, it allows the player uh, to player skill to play more of a factor. That's because you know obviously you're going to be saving your cooldowns waiting for this random proc. Uh, if you're the sort of player that can pay attention for procs and adjust your rotation on the fly, say Hewer, Hewer, you know uses like better spells or DPS uses bigger spells, you're going to get more value out of the new trait than someone who ignores it. Obviously, you are. But in almost every situation I know as a Fury Warrior, you're never saving your cooldowns. You're always using them as soon as they come up. So they either come up whenever your cooldowns come up, the proc comes up whenever your cooldowns come up, or it doesn't. Uh, one or the other, you're using the cooldown no matter what. Um, and so this is responding to a little bit more criticism. Uh, I haven't been a hardcore progression raider for a few years now, but I can tell you with absolute certainty that wiping at 1% due to poor procs slash RNG is infinitely more wor uh, more worse, <laughs> infinitely worse than simply needing a bit more gear to push tw you towards that kill. I understand where you're coming from, but personally, I disagree. I, I don't see how somebody could disagree with having the success of their raid be based on randomness, uh, but okay. Um, for me, knowing that we just got unlucky means that it's worth it to try again. Uh, no, it, it's just demoralizing. Oh, we didn't get lucky. Like, wow, we, we lose. That feels great. Um, and hope for a different result, whereas we just don't have enough gear in AP, means that we should give up and come back next week. Yes, and then you come back next week, and after you've reached a certain point in the game, you've achieved enough, you're able to get to a new level. W why does everything have to be fucking random? Uh, either way, my point wasn't to say this will make wiping at 1% less painful, but more to say that it's hard to pin it on Todd skipping last week's Mythic Plus farm. Poor guy. So here you are designing the entire game around, uh, obviously a player that, 
basically, so this is a two, this is a two part problem. For one, they're designing the entire game around players that are not fundamentally motivated to actually increase their damage and increase their, their power in raids. And also, the way that you increase your damage and the way that you increase your power in raids is through a method of doing something that, for a lot of people, is not fun and it's very repetitive and they don't want to do. So, it's like, it's crazy. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I don't understand how... I feel like the the AP, the AK, the legendary, all this stuff, it's it's gotten to be such a con, on on such a contrived level. It's like you have to think at a certain point, man. Like we're having to do all this weird stuff. Maybe we just shouldn't have this in the game. That's just me. Uh, and then so okay, this is the second thing uh, that people are uh, are saying. Uh, I rarely gamble because I understand odds and know that the house is uh, usually comes out on top. Well, I was starting to feel the same way. Obviously, you need some random elements to keep everything from being completely methodol uh, uh, methodological. I don't. If I, why can I not say that word? Basically, the um, uh, it happens the exact same way every time. Uh, but it's getting really overboard. Sure, I can see that. And just to be clear, we're intentionally keeping the proc pretty flat. It should feel somewhat reliable, even if it is a hundred percent uptime. It's gonna be uh, if it's gonna be pretty flat, then uh, wouldn't it just kind of still be a DPS increase? I mean, you can factor in you can factor in procs as, as DPS increases. Um, also worth mentioning that the above number four is just my opinion of a guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I disagree with that opinion completely. But uh, okay, uh, the issue is uh, that you're creating a problem on the flip side of the coin where power gains are so small that they don't seem worth pursuing, and that each rank becomes less and less valuable compared to the previous. Frankly, just don't do it. Just get rid of the infinite trait completely. Artifact power tokens now have a gold value. So cut progression off after the four four ranks and the new traits are maxed. Let players transition into getting 1-2% to upgrades from gear after they cap their artifacts and vendor the tokens for a little extra gold. And then this is the response. This is what's concerned a lot of people. We honestly don't see that as a problem. In fact, it's kind of the goal. So the goal, uh, their goal is to create an infinite grind. Uh, this is the goal. There is going to be so, so at this point, uh, for a player like me that's a completionist, there is never going to be a point where I can finish the game. And I don't like that. Okay, let me just say that. Uh, if you decide it's not worth grinding a few million AP to get another 200 agility, few million, dude. Uh, it's funny. Uh, to get another 200 agility on your proc, great. We don't want you to feel obligated to. Uh, we do, however, want to make you uh, make sure you always find artifact power that you come across to be valuable. 200 uh, more agility might not be enough to convince you to farm the AP needed to buy it, but you're not going to turn it down either. Um, I can understand their ideology. I definitely can, but it feels like a lot of these decisions that they make are being made by people that don't really play the game. Uh, they don't understand the uh, social dynamics of the game. It feels like they're making design decisions for a game that doesn't have any multiplayer uh, elements to it. And I just don't really think like having an infinite power trait is going to be good no matter what. I, I really just don't think so at all. It seems like a complete huge fucking mistake. And it's really disappointing that they're even considering it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. It, it seems like a really, really bad idea. So that's basically what's happening with AP and AK. Um, as I said, I'm not really a huge fan of it. Um, you, you know, like, we'll see what happens. I hope that they give people some form of closure to what they're doing in the game. I, I feel like that's it's very rewarding to get that closure. Um, uh, you know, finishing your artifact weapon uh, does give people that closure. And in patch 7.2, that will, again... One more thing that will no longer exist as an end to a grind. So also, uh, people are wondering about the legendary items that are going to be crafted. They're going to be crafted items that uh, can be legendary. Uh, you, you can craft legendary items in patch 7.2. They will have procs. Uh, one of them, I believe, I'm just doing this from memory, I think it increases your... I think you heal for 2% of your health every like 5 or 10 seconds or something like that while enemies are nearby. And whenever enemies are not nearby, you have a 15% movement speed increase. And that was the plate helmet, I believe. Also, so the Kadala thing, that's the next thing I want to talk about. Kadala is uh, basically in Diablo 3, 
it's a vendor that you can use blood shards, which are the equivalent of like artifact power or valor points or justice points. And you can spend like, let's say 100 justice points or 100 valor points, and you can buy a random shoulder item. And that random shoulder item can have, uh, you know, using WoW terms, uh, a green shoulder, uh, a, a blue shoulder, an epic shoulder, or a legendary shoulder, okay? They're adding that into WoW. And the way that it's going to work is there's a vendor here you guys will see, and it's the exact same as Tannen Jungle, where you can buy like the Baleful Helm. And you buy the Baleful Helm, and you identify the Baleful Helm, and it can have random stats. I'm assuming this will be the same way. It can upgrade to, at that point, 695. And uh, the difference here is that, I don't know, I'm assuming they don't have a Titan Forging cap, but the other difference is that they can actually uh, turn into legendaries. Uh, wow. Uh, now, we don't really know at this point what the costs are actually going to be. But from what I see here, uh, obviously they're extremely expensive. And I don't think that it's really meant to be a way for you to kind of target a legendary in a certain way. But obviously people are going to use it like that. Uh, that's, I, I, as I said, I... I don't know. I guess it's better than not having it, but I can see why people don't like it. I don't really have too much of an opinion on it one way or another. Now, another thing I, I do actually want to mention this is that this is a good thing that I think they're doing is that uh, in patch 7.2, there's a lot of new achievements for getting all the different tier sets and all the different transmog sets. So if you want to have those ahead of time, go ahead and collect all of your tier 5, tier 4, you know, tier 10, tier 15 tier sets and uh, collect all the PvP season sets, and uh, you'll have achievements for all of those whenever the uh, uh, patch 7.2 comes out. Do want to mention that right uh, right offhand. Um, also in patch 7.2, the uh, new brawlers, uh, the PvP brawls are coming out, and uh, they added a loading screen for the Winter Rack. Uh, not Winter Rack. Uh, I, I, every single time I say that, I say Alterac Valley, and I was trying so hard not to say it, and I fucked up Winter. Um, the Winter Arathi Basin, um, the brawl, and so that actually does look, I really, really like the way that looks. It looks really, really fucking cool. And on top of that, the uh, emissary caches that we're going to be getting in patch 7.2 will now have a chance to drop a mount. Uh, the, I'm assuming, this is just kind of like what I'm assuming from each different place. Um, the, uh, the high mountain tribes, uh, the high mountain ones have a chance to give you a moose. Uh, the Valajar can give you a storm drake, which is fucking awesome. The Kirin Tor can give you a flying carpet that's usable by people who aren't tailors. The Dreamweavers give you one of those, uh, like those, 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 uh, like what are they? Like, uh, those unicorns that, that ride around in Valshara. It gives you one of those. And the Court of Ferrandis or the Wardens, I don't, not really sure which one gives you another colored hippogriff and you guys will see all of those right here and so that's cool i think that's awesome i do not want to say one way or another if you save all of your caches right now will that be a difference uh, like i say item id than the caches that will be uh, post 7.2 that can possibly contain these mounts i can't say uh, I hope Blizzard says one way or another so people can either save them or not save them if they do want to try and farm for these mounts. But I think that's really cool. I, I like it a lot. I kind of felt like it would be cool if they had made the Storm Drake's Gladiator exclusive to give PvPers at least something unique. But uh, it looks like that's not going to happen. Anyway, guys, uh, those are all the changes that are going to be happening in patch 7.2, or at least all the new ones that have been announced today. I think that's pretty much everything I've gone over. I just want to scroll down here um, for all the different news. Yeah, nothing nothing else really in here. Uh, it's mostly just the AK stuff and um, AP stuff and the Kadala and the Emissary Cash things. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, go ahead and let me know what you think. I, as I said before, I'm not very happy with the ideology behind the infinitely scaling traits. I don't like that at all, but I'm not going to get into that too much because uh, I already have many times before. And um, all the other stuff, you guys pretty much saw it. Uh, anyway, uh, please go ahead and let me know what you think. Uh, let me know kind of... Uh, you know, like, what do you like? What do you not like? I'm kind of curious. And if there's something that you don't like, don't just let me know. Make sure to let Blizzard know as well. And also let them know if there's something that you do like, because then they might do more of that as well. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I've got for today. Thank you very much for watching. And hopefully this was help you, uh, helpful. This will help you. I don't know which one I was trying to say, but I kind of did both. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. And like, comment, and subscribe.